Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I am one of your hosts. I am Lawrence Deloach. And with me, I got my main man on the trigger, Chris Cheney. What's up, guys? And unfortunately, uh, we have uh, our, our guest host uh, today. <laughs> He's fucking he's he's been demoted. I, I'm really I'm being honest with you. He fucking he got me tight this week. So he's been demoted. Uh, Luke Trovisi. What's up, man? I, I just want to say, uh, I, I, where were you guys? Where were you? Didn't have my back at all. <laughs> we Come did on. not. And you know what? You you pissed Chris and I off so much that we brought in uh, a special guest today because uh, we, we're debating. You know, you're, you're teetering right now, bro. <laughs> Uh, it's my main man, Haas. Haas, what's up, Haas? How's it going? How's it going, guys? Glad to be here. Pleasure as, to have as you. As the third guest. As, I mean, as the third host. As you, yeah, that's right. Get, get your shit right, too. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm prouder to be here than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Haas, man, you know, I am. Um, you know, I, I told Chris and, and Luke that I wanted you to do the podcast. I met you over, probably over a year ago, man. We had yeah. a, we had an interesting night that night of, of conversation. And I was like, you know, anytime I could talk to someone about sneakers and I'm like, he doesn't piss me off and, and sound stupid about it. I'm like, fuck it. I fucks with this dude. And um, so I was like, we definitely got to have you on. Uh, you have a great podcast that I actually did uh, called uh, my, uh, my first, first kick. my first kicks. Yeah. Tell everyone a little bit about it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for letting me jump on. And you were an amazing guest when I had you on and talked about a crazy story. But the, the story, the, the main thing about the podcast podcast called My First Kicks is where I, I just talk to people about that first pair of sneaker that they needed to absolutely have. And then from there, we just build on and I learn about more about their sneaker journey and, and where they are from, from that first pair to now. And it's just been a, it's been a crazy ride just hearing all these crazy stories. You had the, you had that crazy story that I still tell people about somebody getting stabbed on on the line on the fragment <laughs> line, bro. I, I listen. I'm gonna tell my grandkids about that shit, yo. Like that is that was one of the wildest days ever. So um, I'm glad you're here. We got a lot of stuff to digest, get into this week. Yeah. But I think I think before we really even get into it, I think Luke, I think you owe people an apology. You did give people an apology on on social media, and we're gonna talk about why, but. Luke, what do you have to say for yourself, bro? For, explain what happened. What did you do? What What do you mean? What did I do? Why? You know why you did? Yeah. Why? Explain to the listeners why we're so mad at you. Okay. So our social media manager uh, hit us up and uh, was like, <laughs> "Hey, pick a picture to uh, to put put online. We're gonna do like a sneaker, like a flashback Friday of you guys in your kicks." And you know, I was like, "Okay, I'll just. I don't have any pictures with kicks in them. The only one that I have is is these Tims." And and I had nothing else for that for that one thing, and I just I sent it out because that's yeah, all but I had. What about those Tims? The the Tims were uh, <laughs> <laughs> the laces were choked. The laces were choked. <laughs> it was a rainy day. I was outside. <laughs> Your laces were choked, and then one of our previous guests, Pedia Diabru, which uh you know if you remember that episode, great guest. Um, he called you out and said, "Wow, you are strangling those Timberlands." He, he did not say that. All right. I want to make this clear to the listeners. He did not say that. You yeah, can find I, I, it on the Instagram. Chris, He's, I think you added that in there, bro. You added that. <laughs> that was your own flavor. All right. <laughs> he specifically said, why does it look like my friend here did a tour in Afghanistan? <laughs> yes. Which, which, uh, is, which is fair because I did have the camo pants on. And you know what? It was guile night. All right. <laughs> it was street fighter night. I picked guile. All right. It was raining outside. All right. Listen, that's right. Apolo just apologize to the people <laughs> so we can move on and we can get into this shit we got to talk about this week, bro. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of Sub Podcast, I, Luke Trevisi, are coming on here to apologize for the behaviors of a previous day. I did not <laughs> believe that I should have done that. I chose utility over my fellow New Yorker. I am very sorry. <laughs> I hope you can forgive me. Sub podcast forever. <laughs> Watch the intern show. All right, we, I accept your apology. I think Chris does and Haas do does too. too. You did listen. You did post me and uh and and a nice photo of me wearing the original uh, off white uh, Prestos, part of the ten. So I do appreciate that. You didn't tell me what picture you're gonna post of me on stage. 
I and, wait, wait, wait. Let's make this clear. The social media manager did that. Right, right. The social right? media. Social media, yeah. social media manager did that. I had nothing to do with that. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. The social all media right. manager also did not advise against me. I, it, this he said in the thing. Oh, we tried to tell him. Nobody tried to tell me. All right. All right. <laughs> well, the social media manager posted a nice picture of me wearing the off white uh, Prestos, the the OG part of the the, the original ten, mm -hmm. and Virgil's back in the news. So I think that's what we got to start this week, bro. Uh, now we talking. It's a, it goes from the ten to the twenty, mm -hmm. and we we uh, he had this this um, this website. And Chris, you're like a really technical website crasher buster dude tell me a little bit about that website bro that website is fire yeah, the website's really crazy and yeah. what i will first off say is i think this is more of a uh, kanye influence because if you remember a lot of kanye's aesthetic uh as i'm pulling up this website here he had like that messenger like computer mac shit going on mm -hmm. like a lot of the shit that he was doing was like it looks like it's an i message it looks like it's mac shit right so basically this public domain website um looks like Ooh. a desktop so it's there's a lot going on my computer hates what's going what's happening here <laughs> yeah. uh, so basically we got videos in the background there's a whole bunch of shit so basically here it looks like a finder window okay so you can see on the bottom here you have the original 10 and then you have these actually pendings which is i think uh a lot of the things that we've seen before like the canary yellow ones um mm. you know some of these other things that are about to come out but basically this archive folder. He had all these file references that you could just look at. So it looks like it's a computer screen, like I said, finder window, but you can just like pick all these things and look at it. You know, you could mm -hmm. double click, look at them both. What's crazy is all these files that are actual files that they use to send to the factories. Mm -hmm. He made them available to download in that first like initial launch. Okay. Um, so I didn't know that. Um, I'm looking at these. I'm looking online. I'm seeing people saying that they downloaded some of this shit. So I'm on Instagram going like, yo, where is everyone getting these files from? Like, they're all JPEGs to me. I can't get them. Someone hits me with a retransfer of all the stuff that he could download. So now mm -hmm. I have actual files that I put on the Google Drive for anyone who wants them to download off the sub Google Drive. Is that going to be in the bio? It's going to be in the bio. Hell yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on here, though. So these files are one thing, you know, the shit on the bottom where it's like actually pending these shoes that might be in the 20. Uh, and then over on the top right here, you have this free game in quotes. Mm -hmm. And basically that's Virgil putting um, just goes to this website here. Virgil puts a, a bunch of links to how to like make a website, how to start your own brand. They're actually really good resources for young kids. Haas, what are your thoughts on? Uh, I know you saw some of the pictures. What is what is some of your thoughts on these? The next twenty or the, the leaks that we saw so far. So I think so. I think everybody's assuming that the next batch that they that the pending, which people have figured out what they are. I don't think they're part of the twenty. I think those are just the next releases he's putting out. Um, I, my guess is that he's actually just going to remix the the top ten and just do like either a like a different colorway or get an extra ten on top of those top ten and then like do the same original colorway if you get what i'm saying that's so, my guess though what what the rumors are for the listeners out there they're supposed to be the the two futura dunks yeah. yep uh there's supposed to be a canary yellow uh air jordan one mm -hmm. uh we got what the the court flares those are that's the new model uh the flares and um and then there's a couple air force ones in there that's yeah, what our our yeah. rumor to be. What do, you, you, what do you guys think? Me, uh, go ahead, Chris. No, go, uh, what I was gonna say is, uh, I think these are the twenty. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Where I think because we've seen them before, but I don't think he had like the. I don't think he has all the release leeway that he used to to just come out with all that shoes again. I think they're kind of like winding him down, and this is like the grand finale. Yeah. And it's I think it's just the stuff that he's been working on with those samples. I, I will say that I do think there's going to be a lot of uh, off-white, especially the fact that, you know, off-white Nike this year, because we did lose Jerry to Adidas. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, Drake has uh, his collab coming out, I think, like in the third, fourth quarter of 2021. Right. Um, yeah. Trav is always going to be there, and he's still going to be able to pump, you know, a single model here and there. Mm -hmm. But I think they do realize that, 
if you if we can go back a little bit in time and realize that from tw- 2000 and what 14 maybe to 2016 adidas had such a a hold on the on the market in terms of their the releases that they were pumping out with Kanye and you know and and NMDs and you know Ultra Boost that if you remember that wasn't I mean Nike is always going to be Nike but they did not have the hold that they did until they gave Virgil that that lane in 2017 yeah and at yeah, that everybody point everybody hooked on the sneakers app and it got it well not only that but just the way that a pair of sneakers were marketed. We first saw Virgil in, in at the Met Gala wearing a pair of, you know, Air Jordan, uh, Chicago Jordan 1s. And I think that was the f- one of the first times that I can remember sneakers being used in that lane. Mm-hmm. So I think it is in Nike's best interest to kind of see what Virgil can, you know, give him that reign. And until now, I will say this. Um, I do like the Canary 1s. But what I'm really looking forward to is, is trying to get a pair of Bread uh, Force, which I think that's the the off-white that so many people want. Yeah. I Pos, think- do you have any of the 10? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't. I only have, <laughs> I wish I did, but I only have uh, the, the, I have both fives. I have both. Uh, oh, nice. Guys. Okay, respectable yeah. still. Yeah. Bro, that's, yeah, the way, yeah, that's still. Well, a, oh, I, I wish, I wish. And then, oh, and then I, doing? That's three grand, bro, respect. Yeah. <laughs> and then I also have the, the second Converse, the one with the black and white bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, with like yeah. the caution. Yeah, yeah. Got gotcha. you. Yes. Luke, what that, were you gonna say? I, fe- I think I cut you off. So my whole thing with this is, I think that I think that like yeah, the ones that are pending are gonna actually be in the twenty. I think there's gonna be like I don't know how many more there would be. It was like was that like four more that mm-hmm. they haven't shown us? Something like uh, that. It would yeah. be twenty. Uh, but I also yeah. think that they're gonna re- re-release the original ten Ooh. to make it a full twenty. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's no that. there's no way they're going to I mean if they here, really Here's what I think. Here's what no I think. Way. That. Here's what I think that. So, remember the poll that they put out like 3 weeks ago w- mm-hmm. with like that made no fucking sense on sneakers. Oh, the which said, which one's which better than Air Jordan 1? Which would you rather have yeah. right now? The Off-White Chicago 1 or a Jordan 1 Chicago? Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, they yeah. chose the fans chose 62% chose the Off-White Chicago Jordan 1. Something's sales wrong. numbers for sales numbers for Nike have actually been declining since the summer. I think they're trying to make a big splash in 2021 because like they're they're losing stock value right now. Uh, so there may be like it's just the timing is so crazy that you're going to have this poll. Then immediately you're going to have off the uh, the off white 20 and then you're going to call it the 20 and not call it just like a, a, just call it the releases for the year and then have the 10. I don't know. I don't know, man. Call me an optimist. Call There's, me an optimist. You are, you're being I'm gonna optimist. I'm going to call you crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you crazy <laughs> as fuck right now, bro. It's I think I think, I think the Tims are so tight that, that he's losing blood. <laughs> <laughs> he's losing circulation everywhere. <laughs> Luke, there's no way that uh, Nike will give, they will not re-release the Chicago's or the OG Presto's. Uh, just like we see with, like, Tom Sachs, like what we're seeing right now with Marge. Like, they'll give you a version of it, but yeah. they're not going to give you that same model that came out three years ago. And like I said, we're getting, we may get Canary Yellow, uh, Jordan 1s. We may get, you know, a, a Air Max, a red Air Max 90. We may get some yellow Air Force Ones, but we're not going to see anything as part of like the original 10. I, it's just that part is not happening. Yeah, Luke, you bugging for that one. Chill. But you did point out that there's four we haven't seen. I yeah. think you have a little fun speculating. Haas, maybe we'll go to you first as the guest. I mean, what would you like to see out of the four remaining ones mm. for this 20? Well, I mean, they're already got, I, but like so for to, for me, it doesn't make sense that they're putting out two dunks, you know. So I, I guess like I want to see, I want to see a blazer, like but a SB blazer, not the blazer, not the GR blazers with the the strap on the side or whatever. Like I want to see like an SB blazer, read like re mm. re engineered. Okay. I, to real quick to disagree with you, and I know you said like you know why why put out a dunk it's like why not put out a dunk everyone and their no, mother that's not, that's oh not that's not what you said okay cool okay all no, right i just i don't get why they're putting out two and then calling it part of the top part of, part of the 10 okay yeah. part of 
See, I feel like I feel like now is the, like we've seen we saw the Futura dunks like we saw like shots of them last year, yeah. you know, and, and everyone was like, oh, man, are these going to come out? So now it's like, fuck it. I mean, I you know, they're going to they're going to milk the dunk height to the, to the moon. So, yeah, they, sure. I get what you're saying. So it's like, yeah, maybe they should only put out one. But it's like, man, listen, if dunks right now are going this crazy, I'm not shocked that they're putting out two or three just to capitalize on where we're at and dunk mania 2021 i mean l what do you want to see though do you think they're going to keep doing more dunks like 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 you're you know, saying building off that hype or what well you gotta you gotta remember uh, you know uh virgil did the three dunks uh as the standalone in right. 2019 i believe late 2019 so um what will i what would i like to see i think obviously i like to see a um a air jordan 4 you know, and that and that his take on the black and red colorway, black, red and cement colorway or whatever. Um, I think that that's mainly it. Oh, can I take mine back? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> I want a three. I want to I want to see a three. Ah, see that this is where I was going to go, because we have a one, a four and a five. Yeah. He skipped over two and three. For whatever I mean, reason, and his buddy, Don C, is known for the two. I'm kind of thinking there might be some two shit going on. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Now, Luke, I what do you another, think? I want another Presto. I mean, that Presto is a classic. Great. So I get that. It's a classic. Yeah. Give me another one, please. Another one. I I'm dying out here. Not a <laughs> yellow one, but no, not. Oh, that would that would really look like banana shoes. Yeah, that would be a banana shoe for sure. I'd get it though. <laughs> so yeah, I would say Prestos. Um, I don't know what else I would want. I would. Maybe a nine. I want to see him do a nine just because, like, I've never seen anybody work with a nine in any way. Shape Nobody. Or... He never. No one's touching a nine. Exactly. <laughs> I, was gonna I say, want to man. see it happen. <laughs> you, I'm saying you guys asking for Jordan two collabs are like, you know, that's that's touching it. You know, that's pushing it. I mean, Melo had to freaking be like, hey, man, hook it up in order to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, Melo had to beg. That's right. Melo was like, yo, come on, son. <laughs> I, I can't. I, I can count probably on, on one hand how many uh jordan 2 collabs i've seen in my life you know like a eminem a mellow Doncy. Doncy, yeah that's not a lot it's not many that i can think of off the top of my head so but to me that makes sense in the lineage of what this is you know what i mean like storytelling the yeah. the you know the, the you can't ignore his where his camp has done like the kanye camp virgil Doncy. i feel like there's something in there in the mix that could happen that's all so at the end of the day, guys, we're gonna we're gonna be teased for a long 2021 until these come out. And uh, and if you if you remember what the first ten was like, it was insane to get a pair. It was hard. It was I just remember even you know being on on the sneakers app, the shit was crashing. People were having a tough time being able to purchase. So we can look forward to that uh, part two, guys. I smell the L. Like, I just smell it. You smell it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I smell it. Mad L. Um, I do want to change gears a little bit. Uh, we are in uh, full sports uh, seasons. You know, sports is football, playoffs, hockey, starting back. Uh, we had a huge trade in the NBA this week. Uh, my man, James Jim Harden. I call him Jim Harden. Uh, man, got traded to the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, he did not want to play in Houston anymore. No. And uh, he's playing with, you know, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, man. And Kyrie, he, even though he's a little he's a little off at times. Uh, what are you guys thinking about the trade? Um, Haas, I will defer to you as the guest. <laughs> Imagine if just like I'm just I, like I don't watch sports. That would be hilarious. Sports. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, I don't uh, even know. Like, there's a team called the Nets. I don't get it. <laughs> where aren't they in New Jersey? Like, <laughs> uh, this trade was crazy, and I've been joking about it the entire time. Just like when I saw that, like I was just like I kept saying. Uh, I tweeted immediately that James Harden's numbers are going to go down because there's no good strip clubs in Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what you don't count pumps? No, no, that, I, I don't even know. I've never even been there, so I can't say. Oh, your brain's a go -go bar. It's not good. <laughs> um, and so, you know, last night, uh, he proved me 100% wrong. Started off with a freaking triple-double. And uh, I, it's just, like, I'm I'm curious what 
that new Nets team is going to be like like with Kyrie in it because they're like you know everybody's joking that they're they're not going to pass like how do you pass the ball like who's going to pass the ball like how are you going to facilitate and all this stuff and then you have you have uh James Harden just he's like like 11 assists right 11 assists yeah, last like, night? I think he might have 14 or 14? something oh, yeah, like in well, that range yeah and and it was just like he like I watched the highlights because I'm not a Nets fan I'm a Knicks fan so you know, I'm just watching just out of bitterness at this point. <laughs> I was just like, nobody wants to come to the Knicks. Like, like come here. And um, so I just wa- I was just like watching the highlights, and they just look smooth together. And you have a you have the, you have Joe Harris with the gun to to like collect, like whenever they need somebody to just have open because they're going to be doubling and triple tripling uh, as much as KD as possible. And now you got to double Harden too. So it's just going to be. I don't. Yeah. I like. Like the trade's cool, obviously. Being in right. Brooklyn, like it helps like the energy of the city as far as like being a sports fan, you know. I just don't get like how they just keep letting these big three teams happen. Yeah. Like it's unfair. Well, the NBA is is what I like to call players league. Of course. Where a lot of players can control their destiny, especially if you're a star, or you can control a lot of things that happen. And yes, you, you say, All right, how did another big three happen? But at the end of the day, I think Brooke, I mean, Houston looked at it as we're going to give this guy kind of what he wants, but at the same time, we're going to try to get better for the future. And I guess they did that with all the draft picks per se. Um, Was I happy to see James Harden in in Brooklyn? I really, I still think the Lakers are a more complete team, but um, I am intrigued to see how Harden, KD uh, with Kyrie coexist together. Kyrie is the big piece. Yeah, Kyrie is the big what if. Um, now, Luke, as a Knicks fan, what did this make you feel like? This made me feel very sad. <laughs> <laughs> this just reminded you. me of the Mellow trade, but like on the other, like, and the only thing is just like they kept some of their stars. I don't know how the Knicks did it last time where we just lost everybody, you know? <laughs> uh, they took like the janitor too. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get like, if this doesn't work out, the Nets are fucked. No, that's the thing. That's exactly why it's like it looks like exactly like the mellow trade where it's like if this doesn't work, you're going to see like the what the Knicks are right now uh, or like where the Knicks were like five years ago. You're going to see the the Brooklyn Nets immediately. Well, I think it's definitely identical to the KG and Paul Pierce trade. <laughs> yeah. That's it. They the Nets like to do this. They like to go all in and then, you know, hope for the best. But like and then the, like uh, but teams are doing that and and it's always a way to just combat uh LeBron and and it's why my biggest gripe against LeBron like everybody wants to be like oh yeah he's the goat blah 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 but the thing is is that he doesn't like he's not a player a player for a team he's like he's definitely about himself and like he he shifts the 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 um the landscape of the nba every everywhere he goes or like all his like all the 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 what he does and, and all everything that he does like you know making that team like you have the the lakers have two once in a lifetime basketball players like how the hell do you do how do you compete against that and right that's, now you have these answers of just people like teams are just putting together three of the best players together to try to combat that well we, we always say i mean people always say well damn like you know this this is all done to beat lebron and you know i i do agree but at the same time i remember in in 2010 when lebron said i'm gonna join up with two all nba players and that was a first you know i i can't i can't remember another situation where three guys that were in their prime lebron at, at two, 2010 was he's like 25 26 years old mm-hmm. yeah so he, he, yeah. he teamed up with wade and chris bosh now unfortunately you know and and every move he's made since then when he went to cleveland he he had love and he had Kyrie, and then when he went to the lakers it was kind of like all right well we'll you know i'll, I'll sit the first year you know with Lonzo and Brandon Ingram but my second year I need Anthony Davis so he's always you know figured it out but what I will say is yes like Golden State when KD went and played with Steph like I I could I was in shock I was like this is bullshit and to see this Nets team I feel like it's it's kind of bullshit but it's what can you do it's three what can you do (laughs) <laughs> the only reason I think this team's more balanced is because they have such strong personalities that like they, it, it, I don't think it's going to work, man. I really don't. I just I don't see it working. 
I don't think it's going to work because they have Mike D'Antoni as the assistant coach. And yeah. And, and I didn't know that until the, this morning. Um, oh, you- yeah, because I don't pay attention to the Nets. And then yeah. when I was watching the highlights, they were like, oh, yeah, Mike D'Antoni. I'm like, what? Why is he there? Because, <laughs> you know, you have Steve Nash. But, like, they are going to run that seven seconds or less. So there's going to be no defense. And it's the reason why Houston lost in the playoffs. So you're just going to continue <laughs> Lawrence to lose. loves this. No, I, I, love, I love the seven seconds or less because it's – I have a – fuck it. I have a, a joke about seven seconds or less. And mm-hmm. I, I equate how the police officers, they – they're uh they they must be phoenix suns fans because they like to shoot people in seven seconds or less so when i hear, <laughs> when I hear, oh, when, shit. You know, when i hear when i hear seven seconds or less that's the first thing i think of the cops so it's like yeah it's that was you know that was that was steve nash and, and mike d'antoni when they played with the suns when, when d'antoni was the coach of the suns they you know they had all this offensive firepower but they weren't able to beat San Antonio or teams that, you know, can get a defensive stop. So I'm very interested to see what happens with this team. They're going to pull uh, Amari Stoudemire out of Israel, (laughs) put him on the nets because they need a big man. I bet I put, I'm going to say this right now. That's what's going to happen. Does anyone know how long Harden has left on his contract with Adidas? I'm not sure. I don't know, but it needs to end soon because them sneakers is ugly. Ha, sidebar, Amari Stoudemire <laughs> is a, a player development assistant for the Nets as well. So they um, so they bought all these guys on board to, you know, help Steve Nash. So He's going to be player coach. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what he is. I mean, <laughs> his first year as a head coach, man. He's got an all-star, you know, uh, assistant uh, team. He's got Jock Vaughn, who was the interim coach for them. He's got D'Antoni. He's got all these guys. So they're trying to make it work for Nash to, you know, they're trying to make him seem like he's Steve Kerr, but they gave just like they gave Steve Kerr had a monster lineup or a team mm-hmm. and same thing with Nash. Yeah, for sure. No, I think Nash has the most work to do because like that's trying to make the, the pieces cohesive, like make everybody cohesive. That's the challenge. That's mm-hmm. the real challenge. Yeah. And he has the hardest job out of anybody in there. Mm-hmm. I think, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yes, I don't know, but also yes, head Harden, coach Luke. Exactly. Yeah. You know, as as a head coach myself, of, uh, <laughs> uh, Harden has his uh, two years left on his contract with Adidas. Just so oh, he know. does. 2022 just, 2023 season. Okay, it, it's just interesting to me because, like you know, Haas, like you said, I was going to lean into like he's he's got ugly ass sneakers. Oh, I thought you, I thought you guys were just going to leave me hanging on that one. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I ended up on a podcast where everybody loves the, the hardest. Shoes. No, okay. <laughs> two rules on sub podcast. One, don't choke your laces. I ignore that one. Two, hardened sneakers are the best sneakers. <laughs> the thing. So Nike has the only sort of like lifestyle wearable basketball sneakers right now. I think with Harden next to those guys, I, I think in him willing to just like hop around, I feel like he might be like, you know, I might be a Nike boy. Mm, nah, nah. You don't think so? I, I think that money, that money, that Harden. Nah, he is, might uh, be a Reebok guy though. I could, yeah, he's gonna be out coming out in Reebok Originals. Because <laughs> I, t- I did say a while ago that like he has been like fucking with questions. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could see it totally. Like I could see that totally happening uh if uh who's who's getting it uh master p master, master p trying to get it yeah baron davis yeah. baron davis and master p mm-hmm. is trying to no, get it. i, I have no see. update on that i have i've been trying to check in with all my insiders over there going like do you guys know anything but no one's saying anything everybody's so I don't like know. dude they're probably just like i gotta get work done i don't care chris. you know they're yeah they get paid they don't like media chris <laughs> <laughs> They like design, Chris, where they're like, hey, can you help me with this project? Yeah, let's go take a look. I'll go look through it with you or whatever. But I'm also like, hey, so like, what's going with Master P? They're like, nah, Chris, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Has yeah, he been they, they, through? Like, you just like. <laughs> you can totally see Harden moving to Reebok at, at the end of his contract. That would be cool. I'd be down with that. I mean, he already has two questions. Mm-hmm. I, I am trying to, like, rack my brain. Who is the Reebok basketball player? That's John Wall. There? Oh, hey, Yeah. You- John Wall was the guy, but he's Adidas now. Oh, oh yeah, he? See, yeah, yeah, yeah. He literally got stolen by Adidas. Mm-hmm. That was why. Is that why they merged the companies? It's that whole thing was weird. I was working at Reebok when they like 
like it first happened and they're like adidas owns us but they're also our competitor i was like this is weird and then they had they did this whole thing where they got uh, uh iverson to have john wall come and they were like, playing basketball together had this whole meeting like yo lifetime contract with these guys is the move and then you know he got the contract done but then when reebok started slipping they're like all right we're just going to take him for adidas and it was it was a weird thing i've never seen anything like that happen before i don't think they can do that <laughs> i thought so but then also <laughs> Kevin Durant had a lifetime uh, contract with Adidas, and he was just like, yeah, you know what? I'm kind of done with you guys. <laughs> and then he just walked away, and they let it happen. Kevin Durant had a, a lifetime contract with Adidas? No, Kevin Garnett, excuse me. Oh, oh Garnett, yeah, yeah. Oh, Garnett. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Gar- <laughs> yeah, Kevin Durant, that'd be funny. If you guys didn't check me on that, I would have been mad. No, it's supposed to be uh, Kevin Garnett. Yeah, Garnett, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I want to I talk to Haas about something, because he had, he had messaged me, and he was, he was talking about um, Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yo, you know, you should come clubhouse. You know, I told you talk about sneakers there. And me, uh, Haas, you are not the first person to try to get me to embrace clubhouse. Right. Luke and Chris have has tried it. And I'm not a fan of clubhouse. But I want to ask, I want to talk to you about your experience. You said you, you talk about sneakers and clubhouse. Yeah. So, I mean, I was with you. I was literally about maybe a day away from deleting the damn app. And then I... Uh, scroll down a, a little bit lower and, mm-hmm. and notice that there's other rooms that aren't just a hip hop base and people trying to scream at each other. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then much smaller. And I found this, I found a couple like sneaker based rooms where the people are just talking about like, Hey, are you going to cop? You know, the recent room was like, are you going to cop the starfish 13s? And mm-hmm. then come in there where we talk about it. We had people talk about, Oh, the most like yesterday um, was the funniest was because uh, the question was, would you if if you're on a on a line for a pair of kicks and a lady comes in comes tries to jump the line in front of you and ask you hey if she has her kid with her and he, she's just like he has to use the bathroom can you let me skip will you do it no and, no and yeah and everybody's just like <laughs> no, no what's wrong with you <laughs> not even close and so like you know it's it's definitely a mix of you get to hear resellers talking about how they how they work and how, how, what they do like you know it's a lot of it is, is like I, like they, it's opened up like how people move in this that like I've never I've never heard because you know when you see resellers you're you, everybody's already immediately just being like oh this guy's a reseller he's gonna like try to get you and 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 but it's uh, people you get the other side of actually talking to them because you're not talking to them in the line because now the, at, when you're in a line with them it's all competition at that point it's like okay I gotta get these pairs now because right. I'm not gonna eat you know yeah so it's definitely you, yeah. Can you explain to me, like to us, to the listeners, like how did you get into the whole sneaker culture? How did you get into it? For, oh, me? Uh, yeah. Me, it was. I don't know why I said it that way, but you said me? I, you asked me? <laughs> <laughs> no uh, um. Uh. So, you know, I talked about it a little bit on my podcast, but it's definitely what ha- what started was I didn't have money growing up, so I had to pick either, uh, like just watching like i've always been a jordan fan and i and i didn't get to get any jordans until like my one christmas uh and it was the jordan i think 15s and they were i still will never like it's a pair that i love that i had them but i would never get them again and <laughs> i was gonna say yeah the 15 you're gonna die on the 15 hill <laughs> yeah and so uh that i knew i had to pick either sneakers or like looking fresh or video games and video games were you know longevity so I, mm-hmm. I would always just pick video games until I was picking video games until I got my first job at GameStop and then I didn't have to pick video games at all anymore because mm-hmm. <laughs> then I would get games for free and I would just use all my money on sneakers and when that happened was definitely was around the time where dunk started being a thing so I I'm I'm a, I love the one and the dunks are are basically a silhouette of the one and so when I I found the Nike SB uh, I found NikeSB.org so I was part of NikeSB.org and the forums there and then I just like it opened up like this can of worms and I just could not stop after that and that's how I started. How big are forums, man? To, like because we talk about like we just talked about Clubhouse, which for the listeners out there, it's kind of it's an audio uh based um app where you can you know move like you said you can move around in virtual rooms and and then Haas you you also mentioned like being part of the forums at you know uh Nike uh sb.org yeah. and I'm I grew up and I my era is the Nike Talk forums yep 
and you yeah, know, the Luke, easy boards. I was like part of that. I was part of that, but like Nike talk forums, you know, all the all the sneaker talk forums. I was like, I when easy boards were a thing, I was in all of them. So you know, if, if but that's like that was definitely the start because a lot back then it was all about community. And I think what definitely pulled me in was community because I you know growing up as a as a only child, you know, you want to look for friends is where wherever you can, and and it, that just pulled me in. Once you talk, once you once you hear stories and you talk to people about the same thing that you, that the same thing that you fall in love with, then mm-hmm. it just changes. It changes. You just lose yourself in it. For sure, man. Chris, you, Chris and Luke, you guys, were you guys ever like really into like the forums, like the sneaker forums or any forums back in the day? Yeah, I was. In yeah, a, of course. I was in the sneaker heads forums like every day. I was like, in, like just trying to look up deals and all that shit. It was my favorite. It was just like talking to people about different shit that they wanted and what we wanted it was great. What's interesting to think about is that the blog shit is like, so like Nike talk, all these ones we're talking about. Nike was like looking at that shit and using our feedback Again, I mean, even just look at sneakers right now, right? So they took that formula of like looking at these blogs and then gaining information to go move forward with. They translated that exactly as sneakers. We have been the original curators of this shit. Like blog <laughs> commenters, all that shit. Like we were the first guys to really help propel this forward. Um, I feel like that's the base of this. And I feel, I feel like everybody had a blog sort of era. You know, before you were checking hypebeast, you were talking to each other on like AIM chats or whatever. Like AOL. Even back to AOL, probably I was talking to people about sneakers, skate shoes. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it was definitely like, I think I grew up in a, in, in, in a school that like a high school where people were talking about kicks or like trying to get kicks. So, I mean, I went to hell high. I don't know if you guys know about Washington Irvin and down in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And it was a very, very bad school, but (laughs) I survived. Um, And, (laughs) and so like, you know, everybody was just like, oh, don't step on my kicks or, you know, you get into fights and you see, you see all of this and you you see how much sneakers, uh, you know, matter to people and then you just fall into it when you get into it too. Yeah, it, it definitely, like you said earlier, it, it, it was a community, you know, and I, yeah. and, and, how, so what, and how far back are you talking? Maybe 10, 12 years ago? Like, what do you, when you first really got into it? 20, I, would, I could, I, 20, 2008 is probably, I want to say, because that's when I started, I started working for myself. <laughs> so, and, and, it, and it definitely, you know, and, you know, I can go back maybe even, you know, five six years before that and where i can remember just things being a community being kind of like it wasn't as cutthroat obviously as it is now because everyone and their mother is a a one of some form wants to resell because of the 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 ideas that you can get rich off of this shit and i think what plagues uh sneaker the sneaker culture now is that everybody makes it look easy you know like they're just like, oh, just, you know, spend a couple hundred dollars on some bots and you'll be able to get a five pairs of this and just put it on Snock X and you'll instantly make blah, blah, blah. And it just, it just seems easy. Back then, it, it was just, all right, did you get a pair? Do you, can I tra- trade this pair? And then it's all, then you have to like worry about trading the pair or, you know, trying to sell it and money orders. But nah, now it's all easy. Yeah, Western Union scam yeah. shit. Bro, I had, I'll tell you, I, and I, I don't know if I ever said this, but I remember in college, I bought two pairs of uncles, Uncle Dunks, and I remember selling one to who I didn't know who he was at the time. Turns out he was a dude that I went to high school with. And he he was like, yo, uh, how can I pay you? And I was like, send me a money order. So he sends me a money order from and he sends it from Brooklyn to Rochester, New York, where I, basically where I was going to school at. You understand, like sending someone a money order in this day and age like Crazy. I could have just took yeah. the fucking money and then just been like, thank you. Yeah. But yeah, you know, that community was like, I wouldn't scam anyone. You sent me a $300 money order. I'm going to cash it and I'm going to send you your goods. Yeah. It's so different now, man. Wait, you yeah. sold your uncle dunk for 300. <laughs> Dude, it's 2004. Yeah, bro. Inflation, I paid inflation, bro. What are you talking about? He's chilling. <laughs> I paid 130 for Listen, let me tell you, I paid $130 for uh, each sneaker, so I paid two sixty to the to the skate shop, mm-hmm. and I sold the one pair for three hundred dollars. In my mind, I'm walking away with forty dollars and a free pair of sneakers. I fucking won. Now, yeah, that's a win. Yeah, that was a win in two thousand and four. <laughs> no, because it, it's just yeah. You look, you look at yeah in two thousand and four. Yeah, dude, you you think I was gonna walk out and be like a thousand dollars for these? No, you you couldn't sell yeah, those for a thousand. 
But now, you know, you get a pair of Uncle Dunks or if you was if you still ha- if I still had them dead stock, I could have sold them for, yeah, three grand, you know? Yeah. But oh, I so, said, because you said that because you said the word dead stock, I was listening to the previous episode and and sorry to cut to cut it. No, off. No, no. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. But so uh, was it Luke or Chris that said the oh, term, me. the dead stock thing is yeah. so annoying to me. I can't get over it. People are just using that term wrong. And and it changed like the way I thought about it because I, I opened my podcast with unds your favorite pair and now you're just like okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to change the opening of my podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah Chris what the fuck you're such a dick dude <laughs> the bad, the term yeah, dead bad. stock though no nah, but I mean the term dead stock I, I guess you you know you you talk about it literally and me and Lawrence talk about it I guess the forum way because that was definitely the forums way of saying like yeah brand new. Mm-hmm. Brand new. Dead stock, yeah. man. I think dead stock is taking on a such a um a different, like a different evolution in, in like now because like back in the day, like I don't know. I feel like you know, a lot of people will try to pass off like dead stock means to me it's never been touched, never been, you know, yeah. nothing. But people nowadays they they try them on, they do different things, you know. Oh it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's that's been, another thing. Yeah. Like, like De- yeah, you're right. Dead stock is supposed to be not touched. I think that's yeah. part of like where the term sort of evolved is like because now these kids, everybody wants everything, everybody's looking for shit. So like, dead stock is like a like a term that you see. It's like, oh, it hasn't been touched. But then yeah, people like try them on and then they go dead stock. It's like, yo, I see you holding the sneaker in your picture. <laughs> well, even <laughs> even if you go to Flight Club, you know, when Flight Club, you know, people trying on sneakers don't buy them, and then Flight Club still can you know still sell the sneaker. Yeah, to someone else. Yeah, crazy. I mean, yeah, I thought I thought about it uh, a while back, like not a while back, like last week. I was like, "How is it? How is it? How can you buy a shoe, right?" And then, like, the, what I what I what I notice is that when you buy a brand new shoe, the shoes is not laced. But then, if you buy it from Foot Locker, the shoe is laced. And and then and then it's like that difference is like okay, so then you know somebody tried it on because they don't release of course. Shoes with them already laced up. And I didn't put that together until like last week. <laughs> so by the true definition hots do you have a dead stock pair yeah i have what, i have a, what's your have favorite a, dead stock pair that you have it's uh my probably my uh levi's jordan fours the white ones mm. what mm. year was that 2016 16 17 17 i think 17 i know the blue ones came out the year before right yeah. I, See, it's yeah. even weird for me though. The shoe only five years old is dead stock. Yeah. To me, it that's is, like well, some fifteen shit. Well, I did have well it's because I on DS two of my favorite pairs. Check out my podcast. But that way, that way. <laughs> check it out. <laughs> but um, I uh, I because I had so I had uh two um two silver air era SBs that I just held for like forever. I had a pair of Ghost uh sbs and i had a pair of irons and they were both dead stock like legit like never touched they were like not even put on laces i had to put the laces on both of them so i but like i for the past two new years i I wore both of them so now they're not not respect i get that yeah yeah yeah. we used to have a joke when uh whenever we were trying to sell our sneakers to each other like if they were like beat up, they'd be like, "Yo, it's V V V V V V V N D S." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I cop. I got a story. I got. A, I copped a pair of purple pigeons, uh, and the dude messaged me, and this is on Nike SB, and I'm just like, "Yeah, I want these." Whatever. He sold me for like 180. I guess he just needed money bad or something like that. And this mm-hmm. is like the height of purple pigeons. Um, and then so I'm just like, "All right, cool. I'll cop them all for you." And this guy goes, "Yo." Uh, I, I was just like, yo, because I'm, I'm an amazing haggler. Like, if you talk to me, I can haggle <laughs> you down, right? <laughs> and so I'm trying to get this guy to like 150, right? And this guy's like, listen, they're very, very, like, I've only worn them once. And then I'm going to tell you, man, I wore them once. I went to a movie theater, so I wasn't even like wearing them. I was just sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, you can't even tell I wore them. And I'm just like, listen, dude, just well, here you go. Here's the money. Just give me the shoes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and correction uh the uh levi's came out in 2018 2018 that is that's so new to call dead stock you know what i mean do you, you get like why i have the like the weird tension with it mm-hmm. i guess i don't know man we get it you know it's old head shit it's old head shit i'm just on my old head shit right now 
This is I mean, usually Lawrence's saying, bag. <laughs> it's not like I'm saying, hey, my Jordan 5 off lights are dead stock to yeah. you specifically when I when you ask me that question. No, yeah, I feel yeah, like sure. five years is f- five years. I'm th- why am I saying five years? Wait, four years? No, three, three years. Three years. Three years. Three years? Yeah. I, t- see, 2020 does not exist in my brain. Right? It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> the, the year that nothing happened. But um, I think like if it sits for a year it's, and you don't wear it or don't touch it, like that's dead stock, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the term updated. I'm just being, you know, the old guy. Being right salty <laughs> grandpa Chris over here. You gotta go to, go to the next time you're in a line, just be like, hey, man, what's the, how old's the, your, uh, your recent, most recent dead stock? Wait, right. mine? What's, your favorite what's that? No. They, we're, we're still doing that? <laughs> A lot, a lot of these resellers don't even get to that because they fucking move the product immediately anyway. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, they're selling you, screenshots. Yeah. <laughs> yo. Yeah, yo, you guys are talking about that Nike dunk by you. Oh, man, I'm so pissed. That, that oh, we, we covered that a little bit last week, but what's your what was your opinion? Did you try to get them? How did it oh, go Oh, yeah. For you? I made I made a, a basically a unfuture, reverse refuture. I'll show it to you guys later. Um, okay. But I was I was pissed because uh, it was very cheap what they were doing because they color blocked you so you can only do right the yeah toe box is the toe box connected and then you can only do the back connected and then mm-hmm. the other two, like you could interchange the switch the swish the swish the swoosh and like all that stuff but and the mid and the midsole uh but i think like color blocking like that was was very like it pissed me off because i couldn't get as creative i want like i wanted a different top toe box like why why do i need to have that all to be the same material but then you know once i settled it and i was just like i settled and i made it you know sharing it with my friends and they were like oh yeah this is dope you got you know and i'm just like all right cool um and then uh my my guest from last week uh if you know we both were just like talking about it and we're just like yeah we're gonna get it and then i logged on because i saw the, the the nike twitter uh post about hey they're live mm-hmm. i go and i and i'm like oh snap they don't have 13s and i'm a size 13 and that's when i just gave up but i tweeted it out and i was like yo if you don't even look because we're both 13s and i'm just like yo don't even look <laughs> don't even bother looking and then he's just like what you can't be serious right he responded back to me um and then i go and i was like oh i was on the women's sizes so i go to switch to men's and then and then i just sold out after i couldn't i couldn't get it yeah i was gonna say i don't remember not going to 13 but i'm a nine so i like i I don't go up past that 9.5 you know Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean it's just ridiculous i i and and then i saw like people were posting the pictures of what's going on on ebay with the freaking shoe about how dudes are just making yeah how dudes are just making like colors and then calling it light colorways and being like, hey, 450 for this. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's crazy. And I, yeah. and I can't believe Lawrence agreed that this is that was a good move. You know, listen, I'm like I said, I, I, I don't. Here's the best way for me to put it. As a person who has made IDs and then actually sold an ID, I hate I hate it, but I understand it. If that makes sense. I understand the game. So do I, would I pay $450 for a fucking, uh, a dunk, a Nike buy you dunk? No, but I've so, like, I sold Cactus Plant, uh, Air Force One, you know, the, the shits from last year. I've sold Kobe nine, you know, IDs it's five, six years ago. So I get it now. What I, am I a fan of it? No, it fucking sucks because I, like you, like me, like Luke, like Chris, we were all on that website at noon trying to make a, a pair of dunks that, you know, we were had in our ca- carts for four or five days at that point. Mm-hmm. And it, it does suck. And I feel like Nike, it, this falls on Nike. Like you're a billion dollar company and you can't properly run a website so people don't lose their designs. Fucking sucks. I mean, it just doesn't make sense because like, I, I think, I don't know how, like, how do you run out of material like like what i don't I, like yeah, i don't get should, how do you in theory you should just make another batch then yeah like it's you know you're making pure white uh dunks and then you're just gonna customize or whatever i don't know how it works honestly <laughs> yeah. i would that work chris they're painting it. <laughs> it uh yeah well they obviously did it on purpose they probably had like a limit to the material at first and then once they ran out mm-hmm. they were like whatever but you would th- you think about the other ids you never have seen an ID run out except this dunk in the peak of dunk height. Mm-hmm. Right. So that was obviously a planned thing, you know, because 
if you work that's something out with the factory where you can like customize whatever, then they just have that material on board all the time. Right. Like some of that material is also used on other shoes, not just dunks. You know what I mean? So yeah. clearly yeah. that was on purpose. Right. Yeah. Which is why you think it was limited to 5,000. I don't that's know. Like one batch I, run. Well, I, I think it, it's, it's depending on. Yeah. It's either quantity or. I don't know what they did. It's just such a weird thing. It's it's just obvious they did it on purpose. It's yes, yeah, it's, it's done to keep the hype train moving. Like you know, what I'm saying, if they made these so obtainable for people, then you know, then what? But you make it so limited. But then also, you know, that's twofold because it can make it turn people off. Mm -hmm. But it, it doesn't turn enough people off where there's some type of boycott or there's some type of change that Nike is gonna do. It's just like fuck it, we're gonna keep making shit limited. What you gonna do? You either yeah. you you're still you're still you're still gonna tune in sneakers for the next dunk drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think, but but as like a creative person, I definitely don't think I'm gonna go back. Like unless they let, make it more like because like if you look at how they do the Air Forces, the you customize the Air Force, right? You can customize every little bit of it, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and for them to short short us like they did with that, I just felt I just felt a certain way about it. Oh, of course, yeah. 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 Of course, there. I saw so many people that was upset about that toe box because that's, you know, it. It's just it's how Nike moves, man. It's just how they do us consumers. They, they give you. It's just the same thing I talked about, or back in the days, what what Jordan Brand would do with uh, Gentry Humphrey. So yep. he would give you, he would give you, um, you know, everyone wanted Nike Air on the back of the sneaker, but he would he would give you the Jumpman, but then on the bottom of it, it would say Nike. Right. The bottom of the shoe, because it's like, we're going to give you something, but we're not going to give you all. Or like, we'll give you Nike Air on the, the back of the shoe, but we'll give you the Jumpman on the bottom of it. it. It's always a twist with them, because that's how they keep us like the fucking hamster on that hamster wheel. And we just keep like, oh, you know, one day we're going to get that cheese. And it's like, it's just they don't give a fuck. They ain't going to make their money. I'm confused on like, who's making more money, Nike or the resellers? So Nike is the resellers. At the end of the day, Nike is the resellers. I, I truly believe. Chris, you said that. They're yeah. not. You said yeah. they, they're they're Foot Locker's partnering with Gold and and or whoever. The, you know, they're all these little guys are are moving together. It's like we are deaf as the consumer. The consumer is definitely the the only one really not making money on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you are a consumer, you are being consumed <laughs> by <laughs> everything involving a check and your bank account is empty. Everyone else is making money. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's 100 percent right. And yeah, it's just weird. Like for a, a custom custom, your, uh, like your own custom shoe to be like, all right, we're not going to have enough material. Like let's short, let's short the material so that people are going to want more of it. So Haas, just to, just because you literally said, you know, we're talking about custom custom shoes. Um, something that we covered, um, almost uh, beaten to a dead horse, is this Warren Lotus thing. Oh yeah, I heard. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear your opinion on not maybe him specifically, but just like kind of bootlegs and where they are now. Just because you know we're talking about people reselling custom shoes for four hundred dollars, but then Nike is suing a kid for making you know what i mean like and there's plenty yeah. of other bootlegs just what's your thoughts on it so i guess i'm gonna come at this from a weird perspective because i definitely were talk was talking to myself as i listened to you guys talk about this um so my perspective is like i found reps as a thing like uh, replica sneakers and okay. um like they just look exactly like those like the original shoe so it's interesting if you fall down that rabbit hole of just paying retail for a replica shoe and you know you're you're gonna get the shoe that you want it's just not coming from nike it's coming from some guy so China. by replica yeah. you're saying like a fake knockoff yeah except it's uh, except i guess because there's a different lane with it because like fake and knockoffs like it's just they just made the shoe but they made like they made it how it, they saw it looked out in a, in a picture, right? Yeah. Versus a replica where they bought the molds from a person at Nike and just used different material to make the shoe. Mm. Okay. So that's it's very crazy. Like th that that during this during last year or the year before when I found it that 
that took off like but it took off silently and i found like people were just like you can buy the, the top 10 you can buy all top 10s right retail price right now and it looks exactly like the shoe and the only thing is that they just smell like glue <laughs> <laughs> so you're so you're kind of part of the thing that we've been trying to understand like trying to get at is yeah. like is it okay to wear these types of things or not and you're saying yes like if i handed I'm, you a warren right. lotus dunk and go, i think i think i think i think customs in general like customs is cool like but i think it has to be a unique design and I, what i was trying to say was just like you know you have you already have people just making like the actual shoe that comes out, the height shoe out and selling it off the side, you know? And then yeah. you have Warren Lotus who, or like you have like people like Mosh and people doing like that. Like they just take a, 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 um, a mold and just, they, they make it themselves. They make their, the shoe themselves. Like that's different. And I think like the Warren Lotus stuff, I thought it was just interesting, but I feel like dude shouldn't have been like selling it for 400 and then also get sued by like that much too. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for going off a tangent. Nah, dude. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I, I cause like, you, all right, all right. Hold on. Let me pose a question to you guys. All right. So I brought up the reps. Would you wear any of the top tens, but from a guy from China that made it with the Nike mold, or would you wear a Warren Lotus four hundred dollars shoe, or like a custom shoe like that? Oh, which would we rather? That's a yeah. good one. I rather neither, but I mean, <laughs> do I do I do I can can I say neither, or I have to wear one? No, you have to wear one. Pick one. You go into the club, and those are the two shoes. <laughs> you, those are the two shoes you have to pick. <laughs> in the club setting, I think I'm just gonna rock the 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 fakes. You know, what I mean, I would the fake off white joints. Now they're so good, you can't get called out on them, right? So right, it's just yeah. a moral dilemma, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. You paid retail. I'm kind of with the. All right, I said this before. Initially, I was not like with this Warren Lotus kid, but because of the story and you know, like some nerd sneaker shit. Like I love like how the things rolled out and like he kind of turned me over. Now that you can't get him. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. So, because now you just guys just rock my brain about this. Uh, Ari, remember the Aries? Menthol no, tens. Yeah, 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 menthol yeah, tens. Yeah. They were just ripped off. Air Force Ones, right? No, nope. <laughs> not really. So the He's Ari thing is like this. The Ari thing is like a crazy exception to all this, because when you're the first to kind of do something, you there's some leeway on like how it's looked at. Mm -hmm. There there wasn't people just like, you know, China was making fake shoes, but there wasn't a guy going like, yo, I'm gonna make my own version of this. So that's why a lot of people bring him up. It's sort of like he's like the um, Roe v. Wade of this type of thing. Okay. No, but actually, <laughs> I fucking hate that, but it's right. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. He's like, the, the, he's the first example because not only was it he did his own packaging, he, uh, I mean, like, you know, you could, Bape is kind of in there, which yeah. kind of also yeah. makes this a little rocky, but, you know, Ari had a life to back him up. So it, it was like an official release. It wasn't just some guy on a website. Um, he had this, the whole packaging. He had a story. There was like something to it. It was more than just selling an Air Force One. So that's why the Ari thing is a little different here. Um, I mean, going back to like what's going on now, it, it's it's looked at badly just because so many other people are doing it, and like it's it's a, a question of intent. But the Ari Ari thing is kind of different, if that makes sense. I mean, but if you're just remixing, a uh a mold or a model like right it's, it's the same thing that ari did and yeah but ari Lotus. was the Warren first Lotus one to do it so that's why it's different you know what i mean it's a it's a perplexing a, thing a and that's why yeah, <laughs> that's why i always like talking about it because like there it's a giant gray area in this yeah. community where like but some I also people think like how did no go go right but how do you how do you how do you uh create growth in and you know uh enhancing models or like you know because like like for me it's all about sneaker the sneaker mo mo model like the actual form of the shoe you know like like what they're using to build upon and like how do you progress that so that people are more creative to to remix it or like or to make their own version of a shoe and without them given like given a chance to this you know what do you think about the Quartzta and the Skatesta, the new babe shoes that are coming out that look exactly like a one and uh, SB? 
I'm I've never been a fan of Bape, so I can't <laughs> I can't I can't Damn. like I always I was never a fan of Bape because uh, because of them uh, just stealing models and not coming up with their own. But they were using different materials. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you look like a fool right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, problem, the the main problem is that you could talk about this forever. You really yeah. could, but that's what that basically that's what every clubhouse room was when we were when we were doing it. We would just go on there and just talk about different materials and all that shit. It's great. Yo, uh, I ruined so many clubhouse rooms by mentioning Warren Lotus. You really did. <laughs> Like, you know, everyone starts off with like the, the what you think a culture vulture is. They try to talk about Ronnie, like where he came from, what his quarters credit is. And then I go, yo, what about Warren Lotus? And everyone tur it turns into the, shout <laughs> the shouting shit. Oh, shit. I think but the thing I think where why Lord, Warren Lotus is getting a little bit of this like. I don't know, hate on it is, or like hate on it from a business perspective is because he just he added on to a logo and that's copyright infringement or like, right you know, right you know if he took the whole swoosh out and then put the, the jason mask right there it'd be a totally different story totally but different. yeah but because he did that and it's the same thing with like when ari did the upside down check like it didn't it wasn't the actual check he it was thicker it, like you know all that stuff it that was is, the newport logo it though. was the newport yeah. logo yeah my bad um and and uh, yeah, I mean, but like you know, he it was still like he he did not put the actual check on upside down, you know, like 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 if he did that, then without Nike's permission, then you would we would have the Warren Lotus conversation back in two thousand and three. Well, right? no, that was yeah. Nike's argument is that they said it was an upside down swoosh, and then Ari said, well, no, it's supposed to be a menthol, uh, a Newport symbol. Right. Yeah. By the way, you guys have the same symbol. Why aren't you guys fighting each other? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I remember making that joke in high school too, but it was like, <laughs> but um, that, that, but the, it's also like, you know, but it's, but I was talking about more of like a sneakerhead conversation, like, like this conversation, not, uh, uh, you know, a lawyer in a courtroom. <laughs> right. Right. It's, I don't know. It's just, it's just something. One of my goals is to like find a lane where everyone can sort of like say yes to one thing and no to another. Like, Bape is cool because of this, and that makes this Warren Lotus shit not cool. There's, like, no consistency. And it, that's why you could just talk in circles, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but, that's, but this is what I was saying. Like, the reason why I didn't get into, uh, into Bape is because they just stole the models instead of just making... Like, they, you can slap your logo on any other shoe and, like, and be like, hey, these are the Chris's. you know? But I'm just <laughs> not... <laughs> I'm not going to be like, okay, these are dope unless, you know you've got like the materials as Luke was saying to match, but I just never thought it clicked for me. Yeah. I feel like, especially because base was using a lot of panel leather and I'm with Lawrence on like, I'm not a big fan of panel leather. <laughs> 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 yeah. I get that. Um, one, you know, let's, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how much time we got left, but I do want to, you know, we do have maybe one or two more topics. I definitely, or one topic that I definitely wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, where can we find you at again? At not that Cheney on all social media accounts. Luke uh, at Trevisus on all social media accounts. Uh, I'm LZD uh, three two five on all social media accounts. Haas, give me your uh, your social uh, your social media information. Yeah, I am at who is Haas on all social media, and my podcast is uh, first my first kicks pod at on all social media. Which is a great podcast. I did it. Uh, take take a listen. Yeah, we had sure. some really we had some really good uh, conversations about, you know, sneaker fights, sneaker lines, yeah. shit like that. So that's uh, that was cool. Um, I did kind of want to, you know, I'm, like I said, I don't know how much time we really have left, but I did want to get into this really quick topic. Uh, mm -hmm. We saw the uh, the bacon uh, Air Max 90. Yes. Yeah. Um, we saw that leak uh, that the, the, uh, the official photos or we saw a first look at, at the sneakers back at like last Air Max day. They, there was like, I guess, leaked photos where we were kind of anticipating it being a part of that drop. It didn't end up mm -hmm. happening. Um, like many of these things, you, you see the photo of these like a year and a half before they actually come out. It's mm -hmm. like being being like trying to keep up with these as like a media outlet. Like it's crazy to yeah. like to see things like, you know, two years before you actually really have to talk about them. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, Lawrence, I know you're hyped for this. I, I'm really hyped for those. Yeah. 
So, I'm, a, I'm I love it. I love Air Max 90s. I, I think those the in the ones are like two of my favorite models. And this bacon, you know, is, is such a it brings back such memories and shit. So I'm like kind of hyped for hopefully I can, you know, get a, a pair of those. Haas, how do we feel? I want them so bad. <laughs> I, didn't, I I never got a chance to get them because I was well not like I wasn't in the sneaker game heavy at that time but when I learned about them uh the these are the bacons the Dave quality meets bacons right yeah yeah DQM. And, so, and so like I used to be I used to be the basically visiting DQM like every single day and then when they when I heard about the the bacons I was just like I need to have them because it was DQM was one of my favorite stores. I, you know, I wish I wish it would come back instead of being a Vance, a slash van store. But yeah, yeah, that lineage is really weird. Well, wait, Luke, I don't remember what your take on them was. Oh no, I'm excited for them too. Yeah, you're down to it. Yeah, come on, that's dude. that's one of the top tens I think of that model. If for collabs, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing model. The only problem, once again, that we deal with is uh, Nike. And when we say Nike, it's okay. We know everyone wants these, so let's make them super limited. Let's drop yeah. them on Air Max Day. Let's make let's make people jump through hoops just to get a a, a, a nice pair of Air Max nineties. And I and that part I'm very like weary about. This is a a shoe that I like hearing about from older sneakerheads, just because of the shit that went on behind the scenes with Dave's Quality Meets. Mm -hmm. So Dave, obviously being a person. Uh, for some of the people who don't know, he was actually pu pushed out of the store business, which is when they went, they started calling it DQM instead of Dave's mm -hmm. Quality Cross. Meats. Mm -hmm. So when you talk yeah. to like old heads, like one of my, you know, associates, like Chris Vidal, who used to work at Flight Club, whatever, he would be like, yo, I don't fuck with that shit because I fuck with Dave. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, like people really hold on to grudges like that. And like, we'll attach that to the sneaker. It's really, it's really interesting. So if you, if you have like an older sneaker head in your life, Ask them about DQM, especially if you're in the New York City area, just to hear like what their thoughts on it are. I mean, that concept store, like I'm a big fan of concept stores. And I remember walking in there and seeing the meat hanging and stuff like that. And everybody right. like wearing the aprons. I was just like, I'm in love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Hopefully, you know, that's another L I can hear in the back of my head. But, you know, hopefully some of us can grab some of those. Listen, yeah. we got to keep becoming successful sneaker based podcast so that we don't have to deal with L. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you this. If I if I take a loss on those in the fucking neutral gray uh, 85 Jordan one highs, I'm going to flip out this year. Like, I'm not, I'm not with <laughs> thought, the shits. I, I thought you're going to be like, and I'm going to hang it up now. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I ain't with the shits. So. He's going to stop repping Nike altogether. <laughs> <laughs> would you uh would you anything that's coming out this year that any of you guys would be like you know what if i don't get them i'll just pay resale Ooh, i don't know yet ah uh, you know what those uh what do you call it those like turbo blue jordan those the powder blue jordan ones coming out mm -hmm. the like unc ones like with the suede i like those a lot i'm gonna try to get those i don't think there's anything i would necessarily buy for resale but what I will say is going back to Warren Lotus, those dunks, if I could buy a pair, because I'm down to pay for a joke. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll spend some money on a joke, and that, to me, is, like, a good joke to spend money on, is rocking those. The broccolinis, bro? It's just, just <laughs> something about those shoot, that shoe now with the story, because people are going to look at that and know something. Like, you only, this is the thing. Sneakers are, uh, if you know, you know culture. Yeah. That's like the basis of this shit. So wearing those, that's like the ultimate if you know, you know. So I'd buy those for too much. So you would <laughs> that's that's what you would spend your money on as a joke. Like you would buy you wouldn't buy like a five hundred dollar bit. Like I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Like you wouldn't, Chris, you there's nothing that you'd be like, Man, I really want those. You're like, I want the joke sneakers. Like I want <laughs> that's that's Chris though. Kinda of, I mean, remember I bought that pair of soaps. Uh, the, the the grinding sneakers for like 175 on eBay. They're like 15 years old. They were too small, but I bought them just so during the pandemic I can go to the skate park and skate on the shit. And I only did it like three times. I know we've never seen a, a skate compilation of you using your soaps. Yeah, we need that <laughs> skate compilation. Damn. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, guys? So sup? Uh, the podcast did just make a TikTok. Maybe I'll go to the park and make a TikTok of me grinding on the gym. Oh, shit. <laughs> you you got to play some, like, some 41. It's got to be, like, you got to match it. Got to go all the way in, dude. All the way oh, in. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> so hey, what about you, Lawrence? Which one? Yeah. 
Uh, if if there's anything, I think I would pay. Reese, it would probably be like the, whatever version of the Tom Sachs come out. Uh, ah, like, uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's on brand. Good for you. I remember when brand. when the sneakers app posted that video. I, I sent it to you, right? Once. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's your chance, man. You better go be like, yo, I, I do construct. You better be nah. like, yeah. <laughs> man, I do construction, I do plumbing, I do all of this. <laughs> you gotta give them. I think you you, you got to give them back to you know to Nike after you wear test them. But I don't know, you know what if there's a prize for you if the, if you wear test them, they give you a, a pair. It's gotta be. It's gotta be that. Uh, you know, no, no, no. give you a pair. So it so makes and- no sense. I've wear tested stuff and this is for Reebok. So it's a, it's a different thing, but you do have to give them back, but they do give you a pair, but not the pair that you want. They give you basically like a gift card Mm -hmm. to the Mm -hmm. website. So that's my experience with it. I don't know if Nike's a little different, but yeah, you do have to give them back because they like examine them. Uh, It's Nike. Come on. Don't forget what you just said 15 minutes ago about Nike. They're going to take them away from you and they'll be like, custom Hirachis? Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. They'll be in the Tom Sachs colorway? How about some all-black Air Force Ones for your help? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be, be messed up, but I think, I mean, I think they would, uh, Tom Sachs would be like, yo, Lawrence, you killed it in these. Like, you sent me a video. <laughs> yo, <laughs> you did, you did, you went plumbing. I see the the poop stains all over. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, damn, why you, why you <laughs> nah, the it's, straight like that? That's hilarious. Nah, I, I listen. <laughs> I, I've seen, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, and, and I think I talk about it to anyone who will listen. I think that every time I see someone wearing those, I always, there's a part of me that's like, you fucking idiot. You should have <laughs> just followed your lead and just did what you should have just got them in 2018 and, you know, the beginning of 2018, like you were supposed to. So I don't want to make that mistake again. So here we go. What about you, Haas? You didn't tell us what you're what you're looking forward to. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I'm a notorious n- no reseller person. So like, I just if I don't get it, I just move on to. Boo! Trick question. <laughs> Boo! Nah, you, you trick got, question. You gotta give us one. You gotta give us one, bro. You gotta give us one. You don't have to actually go out and buy it on resale. Just tell us one you would. Yo, I mean, cop, I would. cop out like me and just say a non Nike shoe. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I probably, I probably, if I had the money, uh, I'd probably play resale for the Supreme Dunks. That's fair. That's wow. Fair. The we black still beast. Nah, yeah, we still tea. we got a shot, <laughs> fellas. Those we got four pairs coming out. Let's 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 have good vibes for all these sneakers in 2021, yeah. fellas. Yeah. So that's right. Um, but I think that's us. I mean, does anyone have any final thoughts before we get out of here? Haas, thank you for coming on, bro. I appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Man. Yes, oh, thank anytime. you, Haas. Everybody make sure to check out his podcast, especially the one with Lawrence on there, if anything. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, anything else? Follow uh, us on Sub Podcast NYC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Send us emails. Discord. 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 Yeah, I got to Discord. Join yeah, the I'll Discord, send you a link right after Discord. this. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, sneakers are not a fine art. <laughs> we didn't even get into that. I guess nope. we'll have to save that for another day. But um, yeah. yeah, so that's the episode, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. Peace. Peace.